Um, good morning, uh, um, colleagues in Toronto uh, and in uh, North America, and a good afternoon in the Europe, if we have any friends from Europe, and a good evening uh, for everyone in China. Uh, today, we're going to have our first China-Canada Healthcare Innovation Forum, and we have three excellent uh, panelists uh, to talk about um, rehab robotics as well as neuromodulation. Um, 今天呢，我们有三个非常优秀的嗯演讲者会讨论神经调控和康复机器人嗯的一些话题。好，那么就让我们现在开始我们今天的嗯论坛。嗯 OK, let's start today's um forum. First, uh, we're going to have Professor uh, Milos Popovich and um, to give introduction of University of uh, Toronto Uni University Health Network as well as the Kite Research Institute. Um, Professor um, Popovich and um, he is uh, the director of the Kite Research Institute and also the full professor of University of Toronto uh, as well as uh, the fellow of uh, Academy and uh, Canadian uh, Academy of Engineering. Uh,那么我们今天呢,嗯,第一次,第一个介绍的是,呃,米老师波波维奇教授,他会介绍多伦多大学,大学健康网络和凯特康复研究所。嗯,米老师,嗯,波波维奇教授,嗯,是大学健
These are our campuses. On the left is Mississauga, in the middle is downtown Toronto, and right is Scarborough. And we have uh, seven colleges. So students who are in arts and sciences, they are distributed among those colleges. And we have, seven, we have nine fully affiliated hospitals, which are part of the University of Toronto. This is very unique because in North America, you will have multiple medical schools connected with one or two uh, hospitals. With us, we have a single large medical school, which is connected with nine affiliated hospitals. And we also have 12 community affiliated hospitals and healthcare sites. That's about University of Toronto. So one of these affiliated hospitals, and this is a huge hospital, which is called University Health Network. We belong, Kite is part of that. So I'll tell you a little bit about University Health Network. University Health Network has actually four major hospital systems. Um, and uh, these hospital systems are Princess Margaret, Toronto Western, Toronto General, and Toronto Rehab. Toronto Rehab, as you'll see in a minute, is actually consists of seven different hospitals. We have 11 medical programs. We have seven research institutes. KITE is one of those seven research institutes. We have one education institute and we have two foundations. We do research in basic, translational, clinical and health services space. And these are our research institutes. At the top is Toronto General Hospital Research Institute, which does research in cardiovascular, transplant, diabetes, infection, immunity, and health services. The second was Cranville Research Institute, which is working in a space of arthritis, neuroscience, and vision. Kite is in a space of rehabilitation science. Princess Margaret is in cancer. Techna is doing health technology, mostly on imaging. Mac McEwen Stem Cell Institute is cell-based regenerative therapies. And the last, not the least one, is the Institute of Education Research uh, which is uh, looking at healthcare education, okay? What is relevant for you to know in last 10 years or longer, we have been ranked as number one research hospital in Canada. And uh, what makes us number one is we have about 1,100 and plus principal investigators. These are university professor scientists. We have 3,500 trainees about 1 million square feet in space. We attract about almost $500 million in funding. We have 4,000 plus authorized clinical research studies, and we published about 3,600 publications in 2019. We have many partners. Some of them you recognize right away. It's uh, Jotun University, but uh, this map is much broader and we just now are partners with Southeast University and Nanjing, and we're very proud of that. And that will be added to this slide as well. Overview of commercialization. In the last five years, we generate about $54 million in cash revenue. We have $42 million sponsored funding, about 1,000 patents, 400 licenses, and 400 research agreements. We have 14 startups, so we create our own startups, and we support another 10 startups. We are number one among the hospitals in patenting. I'm very, very proud of that. And so that's about UHN. And now one of the institutes at UHN is a KITE Research Institute. The KITE Research Institute, uh, what does that stand? So KITE actually is, stands for knowledge, innovation, talent, and everywhere. We are dedicated to improving lives of people living with effects of disability, illness, and aging. And we are literally trailblazers in research, education, and knowledge translation. Number one rehabilitation science center in the world. Okay, uh, that's our leadership. So our research, uh, we have about 300 uh, scientists, students, and staff, which are distributed among 11 teams. And Sophia, if something goes wrong, please let me know right away. I will. We, we have generated about $30 million annually in funding, and we publish about 600 plus journal papers annually. We are distributed among seven hospitals, as you can see it. Um, they're in various places in downtown Toronto. And we have some of the 
really very exciting laboratories. And uh, from, the, from those 300 plus uh, people that we have, about 100 of them, about 50 of them are scientists who are senior or junior scientists. And then we have another 50 affiliate scientists. We have some very extraordinary laboratories. So this is a street laboratory with the virtual reality. You can simulate walking in the street or in the mountains, or you can even simulate Shanghai if you want in this. The next one is a driver lab where you can have a full impression of driving and full simulation of that. The third one is the winter lab where we can simulate winter conditions with wind, snow, ice, and all this. We have a general purpose lab, which we call stair lab, which is an emotion base. And you can do all kinds of different experiments here. We are testing uh, how people behave when they slip in bathtubs. We also have a home lab. Home lab is where we test different technologies and behavior pay of patients at home. Very relevant for people after neurological injuries or people with dementia. The person on the picture is Jeff Fernie. He's our prior director of the Institute and one of the people who made main, most of these laboratories happen in the last 10, 15 years. Uh, this is the care lab where we simulate workflow in the hospital rooms. And we have a dedicated unit, a laboratory, which is for spinal cord injury research, which is called Rehabilitation Engineering Lab. We also have a lab where we study sleep and sleep related disorders. And that's our scientist Azadeh Yadalahi. And we also do studies on falls. And this is our fall lab. And we also have a climate lab where we can drop temperatures to 30 degrees below zero to study uh, behavior of our scientists. Um, very briefly, uh, we are moving into new spaces in rehabilitation. One is creating a neuro implant, and this is our neurosurgeon uh, Taufik Valiente. Uh, the second project is we're designing textiles which have sensors in them as a wearable technologies. We do tele rehab, as you can expect, and we do a lot of commercialization. And this is Sukunder Kalsi Ryan, who started one of the private clinics at Kite, which is very successful. Uh, this is how you get in touch with us. And uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to tell you about University of Toronto, UHN and Kite. And I apologize for the glitch. Uh, thank you, Milos. Thank you, Milos, Popovich Professor.那么下面呢，呃，我们就有请东南大学仪器科学与工程学院，嗯，执行院长。Liu Cheng Yu Jiao Shou, Jie Shao Dong Nan Da Xue Qing Kuang. Now, let's welcome uh, Southeast University Professor Cheng Yu Liu, uh, who is the Executive Dean of the School of Instrument Science and Engineering. Let's welcome. Okay, okay thank you very much, Sophia and uh, uh, Professor Bovich. Uh, can you see the slides, Sophia? Yes, works well. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yes. Yeah, uh, okay. So thank you very much, Professor uh, Bovich. Uh, it's got my great honor to introduce uh, our school, the School of Instrument and Science and Engineering in Southeast University. Uh, yeah, uh, Professor Bovich introduced the uh, CAD, uh, do the research about the sleep or emotion, uh, climate or fall or driven lab. We don't have the naming for the labs, but we do the same research about. Um, okay, so uh, I, I just spoke on the uh, introduction of our school uh, for the Southeast University, uh, as we all know, it uh, lies in the Nanjing city. Uh, our school has a major, uh, uh, the, the, the major was established in 1960, and the next year it offered the master degree program. And in 1992, uh, the Department of the Instrument Science and Engineering, uh, and Engineering uh, was established uh, from the Department of the Automatic Control. And in 2006, uh, our school was established. And last year, uh, 2020, uh, we have a, a, another major, the new major, 
uh, of the intelligence perception uh, was established. Uh, for the faculties, we have uh, 76 faculty members uh, and we have 21 professors and 25 associate professors. And for students, we have 400 undergraduate students and uh, uh, 418 master, uh, master graduate and uh, 139 uh, daughter uh, graduate students. We also have the international students. Uh, uh, although uh, the number is not, not uh, it, the, the number is not, not large, uh, we have eight uh, international students. So for students, uh, more than 400 students uh, won awards about the uh, provisional levels in the last five years. So uh, the uh, discipline uh, of instrument science and engineering uh, uh, is the first class key uh, discipline in Jiangsu province. And it's also the key discipline uh, for the double tops uh, construction in Southeast University. Uh, our uh, discipline uh, uh, ranked uh, the, four, uh, the fourth in China uh, among uh, 73 uh, universities. Uh, we have four uh, provisional level research bases, uh, the key lab of the uh, Ministry of uh, Education a key lab or the Jiangsu province, the key lab or the uh, Ministry of Land and Resource and uh, uh, the uh, Engineering Lab uh, of Jiangsu province. Uh, we also have three uh, national level lab. So uh, uh, the first is the national key lab or bioelectronics. Uh, uh, th this lab is, uh, is the only national key lab in biomedical engineering uh, in China. Uh, it's very famous. And the biomedical engineering uh, discipline in Southeast University uh, ranks the first, uh, the first place in China. Um, we also have the international exchanges. Uh, so we uh, host, uh, hosted the conference uh, in the domain about the navigation technology uh, the sensing uh, technology and uh, uh, measurement and instrument conference and the robot uh, human machine cooperation as well as the biomedical engineering and the biotechnologies. Uh, so I have two minutes to introduce our labs in our school. So the first is the robot lab. Uh, it's the Institute, uh, Institute, uh, Institute of Robot Sensing and Control Technologies. Uh, the, PI is a Professor Aigo Song. Uh, she will give a report later. And uh, uh, his lab is uh, mainly focused on the research of uh, robot sensing, uh, teleoperation robot, and various uh, sensor network technologies. And uh, is the first uh, to carry out the research of uh, teleoperation robot technology based on uh, internet in China. Uh, so this is a different uh, uh, robots, uh, the Professor Song's team uh, developed uh, used for the rehabilitation and uh, the special uh, the, the special uh, demand or special uh, situations. Uh, the next lab is uh, my lab is a variable intelligence monitoring lab. Uh, the PI is Professor uh, Jian Qing Li. Uh, and me, yeah. So uh, Professor Li will give a report later uh, as well. So uh, our lab is uh, mainly uh, do the research about the dy dynamic real-time, uh, continuous and long-term uh, vital science monitoring research uh, uh, about the ECG, the PPG, the blood pressure, the respiration, uh, EEG, uh, yeah and to carry out the uh, heart, sleep, emotional health intelligent monitoring. So uh, this is the uh, ECG device uh, we developed uh, with the cooperate companies and we controlled, uh, we have uh, constructed the cloud-based uh, system. So other uh, labs, uh, uh, including the uh, Institute of Advanced Navigation Technology, uh, Institute of Spatial Information and Navigation, and the Institute of Information and Navigation, 
and uh, intelligence med uh, management and control, uh, and uh, the Institute of the, uh, Vehicle uh, Safety Technologies and Vehicle Reality, and the Institute of the MEMS. Okay, this is a very simple introduction for our school. Uh, thanks for your attention. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Liu. Next, let's welcome um, Professor Bing Liu, who is the uh, who is from School of Biomedical Engineering and Informatic, Nanjing Medical University. 下面，嗯，让我们欢迎南京医科大学生物医学工程与信息学院。刘斌教授介绍南京医科大学的情况。Professor uh, college and my university. Uh, my presentation will divide into two parts. The first one is introduction to my university, and the second one is introduction to my school. So let's go to the first part. Uh, the history of our university uh, will be founded in 1934. Uh, it, it was called Jiangsu Provincial College of Health Pro Pro Policy and Management. And uh, through about uh, 70 years development, our university will, uh, was renamed Nanjing Medical University in 1993. In, 19, in 1981, NMU has been approved as the first bunch of doctoral and master degree awarding university. And uh, in the 2017, AMU has entered into provincial high-level university construction program. We, we have three campus. The first one is in Jiangning campus. It's the main campus of our university. And the second one is in downtown. It's called Wutai campus. And the third one is our uh, Kangda College. It's located, located in Liangmingang. So the student of our university was about uh, 18, uh, 18 <coughs> is about 18,000. Uh, the international student and the student from Hong Kong Marco and Taiwan area, about 1,000. Uh, the postgraduate student was about uh, 8,000, and the undergraduate student about 9,000. Uh, we have also, we have 1,877 full-time employees, include 986 full-time teachers. Um, and we have also a lot of uh, associate professors and uh, nearly 313 professors. We have 19 school and department, uh, including the School of Basic Med Medical Science, School of Public Health, and so on. We have also 29 affiliate hospitals, uh, including the four a direct affiliate hospital. The first affiliate hospital is Jiangsu Provincial uh, Hospital, and the second affiliate hospital and affiliate stomatological hospital and Sun Yixian Hospital. We have a lot of program for the undergraduate uh, student. We have also we have totally twenty five uh, programs, uh, including the medicine management, arts, engineering, and science. Uh, our discipline ranked in the world. We have, uh, uh, we have uh, totally nine uh, disciplines enter the top percent, uh, 1% of uh, ESI. Among them, clinical medicine enter the top, into the top uh, uh, one, uh, percent, 
1000. And uh, our discipline rank in China, we have uh, one uh, A plus uh, discipline called public health and preventive medicine. And we have also uh, a, a four B plus uh, discipline and also one B uh, discipline. Uh, our 29 affiliate hospital and two affiliate CDC service for the health development of a country and region. Uh, we have uh, uh, 29 national key clinics spe specialty, and we have 19 provincial key medicine disciplines, and we have also a lot of uh, uh, key medical talent, about 51 provincial key medical talents. And go to the uh, research, we have three national key la uh, laboratories. The first one is the National Key Laboratory of Reproductive Medicine. And the second one is the Collab Collaborative Invention Center for Cancer Personalized Medicine. And the third one is the China International Cooperation Center for Environment and Human Health. And we have also a lot of um, professional key laboratories, uh, including the Engineer Center and the Think Tank. And uh, go to the national awards. We have uh, uh, we we our professor uh, we will uh, have won a lot of uh, national awards, including the National Nature Science Award and the Science Technology Award of uh, Li Jiacheng uh, funding. And the next is our rank in the university. Uh, such as the uh, academy rank of the World University. Uh, we, we just uh, rank about uh, 47 in China. And in the times a uh, higher education world university rank, we just uh, ranked uh, about the 34 to 50s. And in the US news, we also have ranked 78 of China. And in QS 2019 World University Ranking, we just uh, ranked as uh, maybe uh, 50, uh, 57 among the uh, Chinese mainland university ranking. Uh, so in the next 10 years, our university rank will be raised uh, nearly, uh, nearly 57. And for the international, we have also uh, more than 80 partners of all the world. And AMU is building five global strategy partnership and five global key partner rules, including the University of Toronto, University Health Network, and other. So the next, we go to introduction of my school. Uh, my school was uh, founded maybe 19, uh, 85, we, ha we have the Department of the Mathematics and Computer Science, uh, Department of Physics. Uh, it's, it's the, uh, go to the uh, 205, we is established the undergraduate major of biomedical engineering. engineering. And, in 19, uh, in, and in 2018, uh, our uh, school was established. It's called the School of Biomedical Engineering and Informatics. Uh, <clears throat> uh, our school was uh, ha have one first level discipline called biomedical en engineering, and we have three commercialized platforms. We have three undergraduate majors, and we have four key research directions, and we have also five departments and seven laboratories. We have also nearly four hundred staff and students, including five uh, fifty six researchers whose background uh, covered many disciplines such as science, engineering, medicine, pharmacy, and so on. Uh, so we have also a lot of uh, platforms. Uh, first, uh, we, the last year, maybe the, no, maybe the 20, uh, in 2019, uh, we have a, uh, uh, Funded intelligence variable monitoring and rehabilitation equipment engineering research center of Jiangsu province. 
and we have also a lot of uh, um, provincial and uh, platform and so on. So the next we have the commercial platforms. One is uh, NMU and SU uh, Institute, Institute of Intersection Invitation in Medicine and Engineering. The next one is the Jiangsu Provincial Institute of Translation Medicine. Uh, the next is our undergraduate major. We have three. One is the biomedical engineering, and the next is bioinformatics, and the third one is the newest one, uh, founded last year, called the Internet, Intelligent Medicine uh, Medical Engineering. Uh, we have four uh, research direction. First one is bioinformatics, and the second one is medical instrument, and the third one is medical informatics, and the fourth one is medical biomaterial. Uh, go to the bioinformatics, we will do some uh, genes about the big data from the clinical carrot serial study on tumor molecular and tumor micro environment analyze and non evasion early detection of tumors and so on. So we have published a lot of uh, high impact uh, papers such as in cell, cancer cell, nature genetics, PNAS and so on. The next one is the medical instrument. Uh, we have two direction of this uh, one. First one is medical robot technology, uh, include the rehab robot, uh, surgical robot, and so on. The, uh, the, the second one is the rare robot medical monitoring system. We have also uh, developed a lot of ECG, uh, rare robot ECG monitoring uh, system. The third one is the med medical informatics. We have a lot of, um, uh, host a lot of key project of smart med medical uh, for the dial dialysis and treatment communication system, uh, such as telemedical system. The last one is the medical biomaterial. We have also developed a lot of oral biomaterial and tools energy. Uh, so we have the five uh, departments, uh, include biomedical engineering, bioinformatics, and medical informatics, medicine and biophysics, and intelligent communi com computing and mathematics. And this is uh, our seven uh, lab. Uh, during the, se the, se the seven lab also, uh, Include the smart wearable device and the medical research center, and uh, uh, and then, and then oral um, material and so on. So that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Liu. Uh, now let's start our uh, scientific talks. The first one, let's welcome um, Milos Popovich, professor, and his talk is. Uh, Neuromodulation and its use of improving dexterity and the mobility. 下面让我们欢迎呃 Milos Bobovich 教授。嗯，他的今天的讲座是神经调节以及在改善灵活性和行动能力方面的应用。嗯 ，Welcome, Milos. Uh, Sophia, can you see my slides? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Sophia. These introductions are very exciting and uh, I, I very much appreciate it. Um, so I will try to give you a brief introduction to neuromodulation. Um, I will try to explain the concepts of how this is working and functioning. And uh, maybe in some other lectures in the future, we can have a deep dive into that. But now I want to show you two technologies one which has been commercialized and one which hopefully will be commercialized by the end of this year, okay? So I have a conflict of interest. I started this company, which is called MindTech about almost 10 years ago. And I'm a shareholder in that company. And some of these technologies that you're going to see today are commercialized by this company. But what is relevant for you to know is all science 
about these devices and products has been done way before the company has been created. So there was no conflict of interest when this was all done at that time. So functional electrical stimulation, very briefly, what does it mean? It means that you can uh, electrically stimulate muscles. These are low energy pulses, which when applied to the nerves, generate action potentials in the nerves. And these action potentials go down the nerve to the muscle and cause the muscle to contract. The art of this whole technology is not that you can get muscle to contract, but art is to control the intensity of the contraction and choose right muscles to activate them to perform different tasks. So one of the more complicated tasks that you can produce is opening, grasping, opening hand, grasping an object, releasing an object. And that's one of the things I'll show you today. What is this technology good for? Originally, we, when we designed this first systems in 70s and 80s and 90s, um, because there are a couple of generation evolution of this technology, and we were of the belief, the community were of the belief that patients who will benefit from this technology are patients who are paralyzed and patients who will never be able to improve their reaching and grasping or walking or sitting function. So the vision was we will create orthosis. What the orthosis means, you will have a device which you put on a hand or you implant it in the body. And each time the patient would like to perform uh, opening a hand and closing the hand, they need to activate device to perform hand opening and hand closing. And for about 30 years, the whole field was moving towards creating this type of technology in which patient depends on the device to perform reaching, grasping and object manipulation. When I started working in this field in 97, I did the same. And one thing which, as we were doing these experiments and building the technology, we realized that when people are using this technology, they actually start improving voluntary function. And we pivoted, we decided to change the direction. And we said, we're not going to use it, my laboratory, my team, we're not going to use it as a prosthetic or orthotic device, but we will use it as a therapeutic device. And this particular therapeutic device is one of the first very successful and, and, and proven a neuromodulation technologies, uh, which activates neuroplasticity. And I'll show you in a minute how it works, which essentially changes the way how the brain functions in order to enable person to improve their uh, health and, 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 and function. So how does the functional electrical stimulation therapy work? I have chosen a spinal cord injury example to, to walk you through it. So, in this particular case, if the person had a spinal cord injury, they can generate the command in the brain. They can send the command down to the spinal cord, but it cannot go further to the muscles and cannot uh, enable movement of the arm, hand, or leg. So how the therapy works? We actually ask the patient to imagine the movement, for example, bending the arm. And as the patient is thinking about the movement and sending the command down to the spinal cord, and because the command cannot go from the spinal cord to the muscle, that's exactly the moment where we fire electrical stimulation of the muscles and we get the arm to move. And as arm moves, there's this, uh, what we call it, the feedback loop, which is actually muscle spindles in the muscles, send the command back to the spinal cord, telling the spinal cord that the task has been carried out and also sends a command to the upper layers of the central nervous system. By doing this repetitively and not only bending the arm, but different reaching and grasping tasks, we time, we create new pathways in the brain and in the spinal cord that enable the movement of the command from the brain through the spinal cord to the muscle to enable a patient to control the hand and arm. 
This is about 25 years of work behind this technology. So this is not something that happened overnight. A lot of things were created as a result of uh, technology development, but a lot of things came as a result of serendipity and chance, which is very important in science. So how does this work? You would apply electrodes to different muscles on the body. So this is anterior deltoid, pectoral, biceps, this is for hand opening, this is for finger extensors, finger flexors, and you can also apply it for intrinsic muscles to generate fine motor control. And with this, you can gen we can create really complex movements like reaching forward, opening a hand, picking an object, retrieving an object, or holding a pen and writing with a pen. Lumbrical grass, when you're holding up uh, what we call it a book, key grasp, or it's called lateral pinch grass. And you can also do the work with two arms. So you can train two arms, especially in spinal cord injury patients, to grab the object with two arms or to grab the object with one arm and then bring it to the center of the body, grab it with the other arm, release it with the first one and move it to the other arm to another location. This is how the device looks like. It's called MindMove and it's produced by the company MindTech has about 40 different protocols for reaching and grasping and for different patient populations for stroke, spinal cord injury, traumatic brain injury. And this is the screen uh, that is presented to the user and the therapist will choose which type of training they want to carry out. Then on the right side, it comes the information about the treatment, what kind of movement it produces and it provides visual information in form of graphics telling you what the arm was supposed to do and on the left side it keeps the record of all the therapies all the sessions all the protocols that were carried out so somebody can very easily go back review it and know what type of treatment the patient has received this particular video is an amateur video taken by one of my graduate students and it was taken with the patient who is receiving the therapy for the first time and he had a stroke and he had a stroke six or seven years before this therapy is delivered. What you're looking at uh, in a moment is actually grabbing an object and bringing it to the mouth. The movement is actually carried out by electrical stimulation. What the therapist on the left side, Katrin is doing she is essentially just making sure that the hand is moving in a physiologically correct way. But the movement itself is done by electrical stimulation. Katrin, who is helping this um, uh, process, she actually has a foot pedal and she's pressing the foot pedal for each phase of the movement that needs to be carried out. So this was a simple movement and now there's a complicated one, which is sideways reaching. And those people who have been working with stroke patients, they know that this is extremely difficult to carry out and actually almost impossible to do by a single therapy. So what electrical stimulation does is not only that it enables movement of the muscles, but enables really complex movements that physiotherapists cannot perform themselves alone, or they would need another therapist or maybe two therapists to help them in the process, okay? The reason why the patient is sitting without a t-shirt is just to show you where the electrodes are located. Normally they will have a t-shirt, the electrodes go under the t-shirt and all this is uh, working that way, okay? Here you will see she's instructing him to open a hand that's very difficult for stroke patients, almost impossible. And now she's going to fire the uh, muscles to do that. One of the challenges with stroke patients and with assistive devices with stroke patients, their hand is like that. And you cannot put the glove on them. It's very difficult to put the robotic system on their arm, on their hand, because the hand is clinched. So electrical stimulation can open the hand very nicely as you've seen it a minute ago. And this is six or seven years after stroke, right? Good, I think you get a sense how this works. Uh, this is one of the, these are the two out of 40 different uh, protocols that uh, device is able to deliver. 
Okay. The reason why he's making these facial expressions is because he's focusing and concentrating what's going on. Key message is you need three things to work really well. First thing is you need to have a device that can produce really um, high quality movements and the movements in the way how the body would normally do it if it was not injured. Second thing is you need the therapist who will guide this therapy properly, choose the right protocols, instruct and navigate the patient in the process. And the third one is patient. Patient has to actively participate. If the patient is not participating actively in the process, this is not working. So these three elements have to be in place. I just will show you a video of a spinal cord injury patient before and after, and video will speak for itself. What the patient is trying to do is trying to perform one of the asks on the Toronto Rehab hand, uh, Toronto Rehab hand Function Test, which is lift this 600 gram bar, lift it in the middle, and then you will pull the bar to the side to see how the patient is managing eccentric load. As you can see, the spinal cord injury patient cannot even lift the, the bar. He's a C5 spinal cord injury patient. And now you can see him after 40 hours of treatment. There is no electrical stimulation. He's doing this on his own. Okay. And that's uh, at a time when the therapy has been completed. What is significant about this video comes right now because his phone rings. He then opens his pouch with his hand, pulls the phone out, does the touch screen, puts it back. When you show this to the spinal cord injury patient that this person is able to do it, they get all very excited because that's what makes their hand functional and they can do something with that hand. It is not the same as in able-bodied subjects, but it is dramatic improvement and it can make a huge difference in their everyday life. They can do eat, they can eat on their own, they can transfer, they can dress themselves, they can self catheterize and such. The next technology is based on the same principles, but it's applied for walking. So today I'm going to talk about walking, but I'm not going to talk a drop foot system. Drop foot system is a very simple electrical stimulation system, which activates lifting of the foot and it's used in particular group of stroke patients to help them during locomotion. And this is an orthosis. This is not a neuromodulation device. It's used as something that you use every day in order to be able to make a step. What we are doing is completely different. This is not a drop foot stimulator. Specifically, what we do is we know the movement of the, the activation of the muscles during normal locomotion process and we try to mimic this using electrical stimulation. So here is the firing rate of the muscles. So we stimulate the most important muscles, quadriceps, hamstrings, gastrocnemius, and tibialis muscle. This is the firing sequence and you activate it by pressing a button or using a foot switch at the moment of the heel liftoff. So this is the position of the electrodes. There are nine by five electrodes on quadricep muscles, nine by five electrodes on hamstring muscles, five by five electrodes on uh, gastronemus and soleus, and five by five electrodes on tibialis anterior muscle. Uh, the um, paper at the bottom, Trasher et al. in Spinal Cord 2006 explains all the locations and the process. So if you want to try it with your patients or copy it, uh, you're more than welcome to do so. This is locomotion with a patient who has very low function. This is a spinal cord injury patient and this patient cannot actually walk. So here is how that looks like. So these are all the positions of the electrodes. You have two therapists which are assisting in stepping and they're firing the stimulator for each and every step. And the last person at the back is actually helping stabilize the patient and making sure that his posture in the harness is proper. So this is how the therapy is delivered to really complex and patients who cannot walk on their own. Okay, next video of, of the patient who actually has medium function. What does that mean is they're not doing really great, 
but they're doing much better than the previous candidate. And for example, the previous individual after 10 something uh, therapy sessions will usually come to this level of function. So you can see how that looks like. And you can see that he is, he requires electrical stimulation for both legs, but he does not need assistance with the lifting and moving the left leg in clearance while he needs it on the right side. Okay, all the paper the, at the bottom are all the papers that are published on a, on a subject. So by all means, you can download them uh, or you can get it from our webpage. I'll show you in a minute. And this is the high functioning patient who actually fires all the muscles himself. And he's walking on a treadmill with electrical stimulation uh, by firing electric stimulation on his arm. After 40 hours of this therapy, this is, these are the typical outcomes. So here's the patient before, and you can see how that looks like. We put him on a treadmill, we lift him uh, with the, uh, what you call it, weight uh, support system, and we put partial uh, weight offloading. And then you will sh we'll show you in a minute how the manual uh, therapy would look like on a treadmill. And then we apply electrical stimulation and you will see him controlling the electrical stimulation on his own in the last phases of his therapy. This is kind of a summary what the patient goes through through this uh, training protocol. Okay. So this is highly intensive therapy. You need three physiotherapists engaged in this process at the beginning. And with time you lose one, two therapists in the end, the patient like now is able to walk by firing their own muscles themselves. Now this patient, after the therapy was over, you can see him what he's able to do without the help of electrical stimulation. So the most important he's able to balance. And that is really important thing. Once you're able to balance even a little bit, that's a precursor for being able to uh, go into locomotion. And you will see Adam will turn on the treadmill and off he goes. So that's no electrical stimulation, no assistance and stuff. So this you can find in our paper published in 2014. Conclusions. This is non-invasive neuromodulation intervention, which is safe and has no side effects. It can be delivered in a physiotherapy or occupational therapy clinic. Patients have to be mentally engaged. It has to be repetitive. So it means to be done three or four times, at least three times a week. We recommend 40 hours of therapy. Sometimes patients need more, but with 40 hours of therapy, you have very clear improvement. And this therapy, restores the voluntary function. So after the therapy is provided, patient does not need a device to walk or grasp or manipulate the object. These are all the people who have funded our research over the last 20 plus years. And I'm very grateful to all of them. And if you want to get papers or videos on what we have been doing, you can go to this webpage and you can get it there. And if you want, you can follow, follow us on Twitter. And with this, I would like to thank you for your patience and uh, um, I hope you enjoy the presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Milos. Uh, now uh, let's welcome Professor Ai Guosong. Thank you, Milos. Now we welcome Song Ai Guo教授. Song Ai Guo教授 is the Dongnan University Dongnan University Dongnan University and Computer Science Director of the 江苏省院城监控技术重点试验室主任，机器人传感与控制技术研究所所长。Professor um, Song is the chief professor of Southeast University, deputy director of the state uh, K uh, laboratory of bioelectronics, director of Jiangsu Key Lab of remote measurement and control. Welcome, Professor Song. Hey, hi. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good evening. Uh, 
Uh, my topic is force feedback teleoperation robot and its application in rehabilitation. Uh, this is the outline of my uh, report. And uh, uh, due to the limitation of the research level of the artificial intelligence, so uh, the fully autonomous intelligent robot uh, is unable to realize during the next decades in the future. So the interactive robot, uh, now we call the teleoperational robot, would be the important directions of the report research. Uh, a uh, teleoperation robot with the force feedback is a typical human robot interaction systems. The force feedback teleoperation robot system allows the human to perform complex tasks remotely, and it provides haptic feedback to the human operator. So uh, it can let the uh, human feel as if the, he or the a robot in the remote site. Uh, and uh, the objective of the, the teleoperational robot is uh, telepresence. Uh, what's the telepresence? Uh, telepresence is the design goal of the force feedback teleoperational system. And I, okay. oh, uh, now you, you can see uh, there are two types of the telepresence of sensing for the teleoperational robot. Uh, the first is the real telepresence, and the second is the false telepresence. We also call it haptic telepen, uh, telepresence. And uh, now, so the false feedback teleoperational robot can be widely used in lots of areas. Uh, the typical use areas is remote surgery uh, and the human power amplifier uh, like this uh, and uh, uh, the rehabilitation areas. So you, you can see from this uh, small video, this is the uplim rehabilitation robot system with the force feedback. And the force feedback plays an important role in the rehabilitation system. Okay, so uh, there, are, there are some key technologies of the force feedback teleoperational robot. The first is sensors for human robot interaction. The second is the uh, haptic display device. Uh, it's realized uh, force feedback. Uh, and the tactile, and the tactile uh, feedback. And the third is the control of the teleoperational robot. And the fourth is the virtual reality technology. Oh, okay. Uh, now the, uh, the sensors for the human robot interaction uh, consists of two parts. The first is the sensors for human movement checking, uh, such as dead glove, uh, must hand. Uh, and the second, second part is robot sensors, uh, such as the force sensor, a multidimensional force sensor, and the tactile sensor. And the second key technologies of the force feedback te teleoperational robot is the haptic display devices. And uh, it uh, uh, includes two parts. The first we call the force feedback devices, uh, such as exoskeleton device, a hand controller, cyber glove, joystick, and so on. The second is the tactile display device, uh, such as shape display, vibration stimulus, electric stimulus, and, and so on. And the third key technologies of force feedback teleoperational robot is the control of teleoperational robot. Uh, because of the time delay between the communication line, so uh, the control for the uh, force tele 
false feedback television robot is very important. The objective of the control is uh, get the good stability and uh, high transparency. Uh, and the fourth key technologies of the force feedback teleoperational robot is a virtual reality technology. Uh, it uh, consists of two parts. The first is the graphical modeling and the rendering, and the second is the haptic modeling and the rendering. Uh, the haptic modeling and the rendering is very important, and it is it, uh, also a key technology of of our rehabilitation systems. So uh, uh, let's introduce some developments in our lab. Uh, the first development is the multidimensional force torque sensors for the uh, robot. Uh, we have designed a low safety coupled six degree of freedom force torque sensor. Uh, we also proposed a copying lean arrow model based decoupling algorithm so we can get high accuracy of our force measurement. Uh, the measurement ranges of the multidimensional force torque sensors are from 10 newton to 10,000 newton and 0.5 newton meter to the 3,000 newton meters. The precision of our force, uh, force torque sensors is 1% full scale to 2.5% uh, full scale. And uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, array tactile sensors for robot developed uh, in our lab. And uh, this is uh, 16 times 16 array tactile sensors based on the silicon semiconductor technical. And uh, this is uh, PBDF based uh, textual sensors for fabric textual measurement and classification. And this is a flexible array tactile sensor based on the capacitance detection. And uh, uh, this is a, a array tactile sensor based on the resistance detection. Uh, and uh, uh, this, uh, the third uh, technical developed in our lab is uh, uh, force feedback devices uh, and the haptic display devices. Uh, this is the softless haptic display devices and uh, we change the effective lens here uh, so we can uh, that the human operators feel the different softness uh, of the virtual object or remote object. Uh, and this is the force feedback data glove uh, based on the electrological effect. Uh, and this is, is the excellent glove with force and tactile feedback uh, developed in our lab. Uh, and uh, this is a uh, uh, hand uh, force feedback hand controller. Uh, and uh, this is the first generation six stop force feedback hand controller uh, in two, oh, 2000 years. Uh, it, it has the same mechanical structure as the slave manipulator. This is a Puma slave manipulator. Uh, a robot manipulator and uh, the structure, mechanical structure is the same. It also has the six dwarf. And the, you, you, you can see this small video. Uh, this is uh, 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 usually our developed force feedback tele original uh, force feedback hand controller to control this is a Puma robot. And, uh, and the uh, interactive force between the human robot and the environment can measured by the uh, six star uh, for sensor and uh, send back to the hand controller. So the human 
vapor can feel the interactive force between the uh, between the uh, slave robot and the environment. Okay, uh, and this is the second generation six of force feedback hand controller uh, developed in our lab in twenty and uh, oh two year. It has a different mechanical structure from the slave manipulator. Now, uh, this is a small video can show. We use uh, this uh, second generation six star force feedback hand controller to remote control the uh, robot. It has a different uh, mechanical structure from the slave robot. Uh, okay, and uh, this is the third generation six star force feedback hand controller uh, developed developed in our lab in 2010 years. Uh, it has a high precision with 0.2 millimeter precision resolution. Uh, and uh, it has a three dimensional force feedback and a three dimensional torque feedback, uh, 20 Newton maximum force feedback. And uh, you can See from this small video, we use this the force feed feedback hand controller uh, to control the virtual slave robot. Uh, and uh, you, uh, here you can feel the six force and the torque uh, between the virtual slave manipulator and the environment. Uh, why we, uh, why we, uh, introduce the force feedback hand controller because the force feedback controller is a, is a very important. It, uh, it, it can also used in the rehabilitation areas. Okay. And the, this is the force technical developed in our lab. Uh, we, the, we call the teleoperation robot based based on the biological electrical signal. And uh, we, uh, we detect uh, the surface EMG of the free arm to identify the hand actions. And we use this signal, uh, this uh, identify fi fiction result to control the slave robot hand movement. And uh, we, uh, this is the, the teleoperation robot uh, uh, control structure based on the detection and the identification of the surface EMG of the free arm. Okay, and uh, this is the uh, line invasive EEG signal detection, and uh, we use the identification result for robot control. And uh, this small video is the uh, research is uh, EEG uh, based teleoperational robot developed in our lab in 2000, uh, uh, 2007 year. This is a typical application of the teleoperation robot based on the biological electrical signal. And this is uh, the first generation prosthetic hand developed by us in uh, 2010 year. And uh, we use the SEMG signal uh, to control the prosthetic hand. And uh, on the prosthetic hand, we uh, developed some uh, tactile sensors. And uh, these tactile sensors can measure the interactive force between the uh, fingertip and the object. So, uh, uh, the, from this video, you can see these people you use our uh, prosthetic hand, he can grasp some soft glass, soft uh, cup, and uh, hard cups. And they can also grasp the eggs. 
and uh, he can use this uh, to grasp the pen to to write some uh, to write uh, write uh, some uh, word. Okay. And this is uh, eight channels SEMG detection and hand gesture regulation uh, for prosthetic hand. Uh, we use the eight channel SEMG detection and, and uh, identify the uh, gesture of the hand and uh, use this re result to control, uh, to control this prosthetic hand. Okay, uh, this is the uh, eight channel SEMG control the, the prosthetic hand. Uh, we also here we use a vibrate tactile stimulation feedback to the human. The why uh, the vibrate tactile stimulation is uh, installed on the another hand. Uh, now the right hand is a prosthetic uh, hand, and the and the feedback. Uh, information of the touch and uh, we using the vibrate vibro tactile stimulation uh, device uh, here and so uh, he can uh, feel the grasp force and the touch information here we use the two times two tactile sensors installed on the fingertip of the uh, prosthetic hand okay uh, now let's introduce some applications in rehabilitation of limb uh, because uh, the stroke is a leading causes of serious long-term disability uh, especially in china each year there are more than uh, two million people suffer strokes uh, so uh, the rehabilitation uh, is, uh, is very, very important for the China. Uh, and the robot can support the movement therapy of the limb, uh, especially force feedback television robot. Uh, here, uh, the force television robot as a human robot interaction system can be widely used in rehabilitation of the limb. The multiple force talk sensors force feedback hand controllers, robot control, and which environment modeling and haptic rendering are also the fundamental technologies of rehabilitation robot. So uh, we uh, use our force feedback televisional technology in the rehabilitation areas. We develop developed a small rehabilitation robot for up limb rehabilitation and uh, designed some therapy games with the force feedback. Uh, now, uh, 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 it has uh, uh, two training model, passive training model and the active training model. And here we use the, uh, we use the uh, adaptive impedance control to get the uh, stability and the movement smoothly. Uh, and uh, here, the therapy game is used in the active training modeling. It can uh, let the uh, uh, post shock uh, actively uh, do exercise. And uh, uh, we built a rehabilitation robot uh, based on the warm arm uh, using our three-dimensional force sensor and, uh, use, uh, and using our uh, proposed uh, adaptive PI control algorithm. And uh, now uh, you can see uh, this is the passive training uh, at the beginning and uh, uh, 20 days later, the, you, you can see uh, the uh, movement of the defunction hand uh, 
I enlarged uh, very much. So from this uh, picture, you can see this is a uh, shoulder joint movement, and this elbow joint movement uh, ranges. So, and and uh, twenty days later, and uh, the movement ranges uh, enlarged obviously. Okay. Uh, in order to meet the increasing need of the shape program, we also developed some internet-based tele-rehabilitation robot systems. And the, the tele-rehabilitation robot systems uh, bridge the patient at home or in nursing houses, and the therapist at the rehabilitation service. And one of our developed internet-based tele-rehabilitation robot system is one therapist to three patient tele-rehabilitation robot system for uplim dysfunction. Uh, for, so uh, in this system, we can let one therapist remotely uh, direct the and the movement and monitor the three post patient do rehabilitation exercise uh, assisted by a rehabilitation robots. And this is the frameworks of one therapist to three patients tele rehabilitation robot system. And, and uh, you, you can see uh, this is the uh, server computer in the therapist service. And uh, one therapist can uh, remotely uh, control three different uh, rehabilitation robots and uh, guide the rehabilitation exercise of three people uh, through the computer internet. And uh, we also developed the rehabilitation robot uh, this is the full degree of freedom uh, rehabilitation robot. And uh, uh, three uh, DOF adjust the position and attitude of the robot, one for the rehabilitation training. Okay, this is the serve computer in therapist service <coughs> of our system. And, and, and uh, the, so, uh, one therapist can remotely uh, watch the three, three patient, and uh, he can uh, uh, remotely uh, control the three different uh, rehabilitation robot in located in different uh, sites. Okay, this is. Client computer in the patient side of the one therapist to three patients tele rehabilitation robot system. Uh, and uh, uh, here uh, is the visual information acquisition. And the, this is a uh, uh, communication with, with the therapist uh, selection. And the, this is a training model display. Uh, and uh, we also um, programmed some safety games for this system. Uh, this is a small ball catch game, and uh, this is some some driving game, and some uh, uh, some uh, this is daily uh, daily life uh, training game. And uh, our systems has been used in some nursing houses in Beijing city and Shanghai city. And this small video is uh, uh, show our system uh, in nursing house. Okay. And uh, Uh, <coughs> uh, this is the uh, slender hand 
rehabilitation robot with the force feedback. Uh, uh, and uh, we also uh, program some uh, game for these uh, systems. And uh, we also do some clinical experiment in hospital. This is the active training model. Okay. And uh, this is the desktop rehabilitation robot for Ablim uh, based on the force feedback game. And uh, we also program some, some game with uh, uh, haptic uh, uh, modeling and the uh, haptic rendering. So uh, this uh, 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 therapy game can fit back some uh, force to the to this hand uh, this uh, rehabilitation robot. It's based on the force feedback hand controller, and this is the desktop rehabilitation robot. Uh, in last type. Okay, uh, and uh, we also use our desktop uplim rehabilitation robot uh, doing the mirror training. And uh, we uh, use a camera to check the health, healthy limb and uh, use this information to control the rehabilitation robot to, to join the dysfunction limb. Okay, uh, we uh, also cooperated with the Changzhou Change Rehabilitation Company <coughs> to develop the uh, force feedback rehabilitation robot. And we also established a similar inter active interface. Uh, the, this at the end, uh, at, uh, uh, at the bottom of this screen, uh, this is some program the uh, therapy game for this interactive therapy uh, uh, rehabilitation robots. Okay, uh, that's all. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Song. Uh, thank you, Song uh, Let's welcome Professor uh, now let's welcome Professor Jian Qingli, uh, Vice President of Nanjing Medical University for his talk. Um, Professor Li is the Director of uh, Jiangsu Provincial Engineering Research Center for Inter Intelligent Wearable Monitoring and Rehabilitation Equipment. Uh, Li Jiaoshou is the Xianjin Jishu Yu Zhuangbei Yanjiu Yuan de Yuan Zhao. 那么他今天的这个讲座的课题是基于镜像训练的康复机器人。Professor Li's talk is a rehabilitation robot based on mirror training. Let's welcome Professor Li. Thanks. Uh, Honorable Professor Povic, Professor Song, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and uh, good evening. Uh, it is my pleasure to participate in the China Canada Health uh, Healthcare Innovation uh, Forum about the rehabilitation system. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Professor uh, Popovic for organizing this uh, forum and building the cooperation relation with the University of uh, uh, Toronto University Health Network, uh, Southeastern University, and Nanjing Medical University. Uh, in the future, I think we can furthermore enhance our rich, uh, research, education, uh, discipline, uh, cooperation, uh, producing a uh, bread for achievement under the MOU. Uh, today, uh, I want to introduce uh, uh, briefly, my research about the rehabilitation robot sitting, which belongs to the close fight of health with medicine and uh, engineering. As we all know, uh, the 
instance of uh, stroke and the rate of uh, disability remained high in China. And the new rehabilitation equipment is urgently needed to accelerate the re recovery uh, process of patients. In order to satisfy the requirement of the rehabilitation method and the standard of the living in China, we focus on the research of the rehabilitation robot system. Use the advantage of the clinic in Nanjing Medical University and is aptly aged uh, hospital. Our rehabilitation robot system research mainly closed in uh, integrate uh, with with the clinical uh, focus on the clinical problems. Uh, four years ago, uh, our labs in Nanjing University uh, Medical University and uh, South uh, Southeastern University, together with uh, Nanjing with with Shenzhen Robot Companies, uh, Jiangsu Province Hospitals, Hefei uh, Institutes of uh, Physical Science. Uh, Chinese Academic of Science, uh, nine affili uh, affiliations uh, applied success to the national care research and development uh, development re uh, reject uh, stroke rehabilitation robot system. The funding of the project include, uh, includes more than 23 million. Through the past four years, we published more than 15 papers, uh, 40 patents, and uh, seven robot uh, prototype systems. Uh, I have another research director uh, collaborated with South State University, which is a wearable ECG monitoring uh, motoring. Uh, due to time uh, constraint, I will not further in introduce this topic today. Uh, finally, I would like to introduce my colleague, Associate Professor Liu Bing, to represent our team and uh, report the latest research progress on stroke rehabilitation robot based uh, on mirror training. Uh, let's welcome Bing for the uh, presentation and uh, thanks for your attention. Uh, Thank you, Professor Li, and uh, it's my honor to represent our research team to introduce our latest progress on rehab robot. Today, I'd like to talk something about the stroke rehab robot based on mirror training. Uh, the, pre the presentation is divided into four parts. First one is the background. Uh, according to a research paper from 2016, GD GBD stroke collaborators, stroke is a leading cause of mortality and dis disability worldwide. And the ec economic cost of treatment and the post-stroke care are Subsisted. There were eighteen. There were eighty million present cases of stroke globally in 2016. Although age standard mortality rates have decreased sharply from 1990 to 2060, the decrease in age standardized indice has been less st step, indicated that the burden of stroke is likely to remain high especially in developing country and area. From this picture, we can see uh, the China was the most, uh, uh, the most uh, uh, red uh, uh, area of the world. So it means that the intensity per, uh, per 100,000 people will be uh, raised about 300. And the, go to the China, uh, according to China Stroke Prevention and Treatment Report 2019, 
China has 70 million stroke patients with hepatitis B by 2060. The left feature shows the incidence uh, of China tend to study it from 1905 uh, to, uh, to, to 2070, but still higher than the world average, especially to different regions shown in the right figure. Uh, from the figure, we can see uh, the stroke mortality of China in rural areas is higher than in urban areas. So the key to the change to change this situation is that the current trend model in our in our hospital is mostly one to one uh, rehab training for stroke patients and therapists. The therapists have a heavy workload, and the worst situation in the uh, is the number of the rehab therapists per one hundred thousand people in China is far below the world average level. From the picture we can see, in China we have 0 0.5, 0, 0 0.4, and the world average is 70. The second is the norm normative and precise of manual treatment is difficult to guarantee for the precise medicine. Therefore, rehab robot is the best solution it can achieve a large number of repetitive, precise, and standardized training. F from the picture, we can see uh, the therapist manual G training is very uh, high for, for, the, uh, tr for the training, but the uh, G training using robot is very uh, uh, helpful for the patients. So the research progress uh, will be uh, from the international uh, research in the middle to late 1990s, rehabilitation uh, robots began to re receive attention in developed countries such as Europe and the United States. Uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, institutes such as MIT, uh, Stanford University, the University of California, the Federal Institute of Technique in Switch and the uh, uh, Cyber Cooperate of Jap Japan has developed, auto, has developed rehab robots with different structures. So the developer country has made significant progress in rehab robots. But, but from the Chinese research, we can say since 20. Since 2000, many Chinese companies such as Guangzhou Econ, Beijing Daai, Foria Intelligence, Shanghai Jia, Jia Jinghe, and Tinghua University, South Southeast University, Harbin Engineering University challenges. The current rehab robots do have some urgent problems and technical challenges. The first one is the structure design is too complete, lack like flexible and safety is difficult to guarantee. Uh, as we can see uh, before that showed in uh, our uh, recent research, the uh, robot will be huge and uh, the, uh, the structure is not uh, very, good, very good for the patients and uh, and the therapists will uh, waste a lot of time to uh, to use the robots to training the patients. The second one is the rehab training mode is limited and simple, like uh, adaptability. Uh, the first one is we should train uh, tra uh, we should um, train tra tra different state of patients uh, use dif using different different training modes, such as in the beginning, uh, we should use the robot to help the patients to, to do some uh, uh, rehab. And uh, in the last, uh, they have also some voluntary uh, mo 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 motions. So the robots will uh, give some uh, resistance to, uh, to train the patients. The third one is the low level of human machine integrations. Uh, so I think maybe uh, the VR uh, technology will be uh, engaged to 
uh, have the uh, human machine interaction and also the uh, human uh, machine uh, uh, intelligent interactions. Uh, the fourth one is the inherent regular of motion function reconstruction and brain function remodeling in patients where stroke has not been discovered. So we should be uh, using the basic medicine to discover some uh, basic symbol of the rehab. So I think uh, these two relations we should be uh, discovered in the later. And the last one is we lack the clinical specifications for rehab robots. Uh, and I will also talk uh, in the last uh, of my uh, presentation. So go to the third one in our research. Uh, so the new tinge of the cell pair, uh, we, we, we find the mirror changing cell pairs. Uh, the principle of, the principle of mi mirror cell pair is the use of a mirror to create a reflective illusions of an effective lamp in order to trick the brain into the thinking movement have occurred without pain and all to create positive virtual feedback of a lamp movement. It involved place the effect lamp behind a mirror, which sight so, uh, which is a sight, so the reflection of the uh, opposing uh, lamp appeared in the place of the hiding lamp, just as uh, we can see in the, in these pictures that I have, I have shown. Uh, so the minor training therapy, according the principle of MT, we want to use the engineering method to realize the um, mirror training therapy. Firstly, on the non-effective side, uh, uh, we, we, we have uh, uh, acquired a lot of signals, such as the high density EMG image, the false uh, signal, the RMU signal and uh, so on to acquire the mo motion intense of the patients. On the effective side, uh, according different stage of stroke, we can use different mode to train the patients. I will show the detailed block diagram following. So the new demand for the rehab robots, the mirror training therapy puts new demand on the robo uh, rehab robots. The first one is the safe and the comfortable of human machine interface. And the second one is the intelligent adaptive training. So under the two demand, we should to develop intelligence adaptive ab ability. And we also develop training specification and standard produce. So uh, I think um, we, uh, be, uh, be, after we solve these two uh, problems, we can uh, we can um, uh, maybe discover the internal role of promoting motion function reconstruction and brain function remodeling in stroke patients. So the next uh, one is our uh, recent uh, progress. The first one, the first part is the cool technology uh, using our uh, robots. We we divide we divide it to three types, a three part. The first one is the sensing. Uh, we can use the a uh, lot of a sensor to uh, to generate the mo motion enter recognizing, and the second part is the driving. We use different of driving system. First one is the hybrid hybrid driving system. We can use the power and uh, no power uh, driving to uh, to realize our system. And the second is the cab driving. We can use the cab to drive our uh, mo to drive our movement. And the third part is the interactive. We can uh, develop human machine interface, and we can also use the function now electronic stimulation. So the first one is the lamp motion inter, inter uh, recognitions. The system used the non 
uh, invasion variable device, uh, meal arm band is developed by a new uh, motion capture system. We use the eight channel EMG data collected at 200 hertz sample rate for the just re recognized position. Through different deep learning methods such as CNN GAN, and we can also uh, realize the recognized reach of just on um, public data site was more than 19% and the delayed time no more than 200 milliseconds. And the second one is the hybrid, hybrid drive systems. Uh, the positive actu actuator, um, we call the magnetological damper, uh, is driven to roll by an active driver, DC motor, just uh, uh, we can see in the center of these pictures. Uh, this is a DC motor and the, the, the other uh, around the motor is uh, MR motors, which, which, which we call the uh, magnetic logical uh, uh, actual unit. And using this system, we can also uh, uh, decouple the output force, speed, and improve the response bandwidth of the system and reduce the volume of the driving system and enhance the force control performance of our system. So uh, this, uh, this system is, uh, had a lot of advantages. So the next is the cable drive. Uh, we can, uh, the drive system uh, based on the cable uh, transmission is designed, which can be used to set the drive device at the uh, operative position instead of having to place near the driving joint. So as to reduce the body weight of the rehab uh, training robot. And the, this, the, the right figure is the, is our uh, basic sample of uh, a cab drive uh, system uh, using in upper lamp rehab uh, robot. And the, the fourth one is the human machine interactions. Uh, we use the virtual reality interaction systems. We design a lot of uh, smart sensory game based on Microsoft One Box, such as driving games. Uh, apple picking games and other games. Uh, using these games, we can uh, uh, we can uh, maybe uh, give patients more uh, feeling about the uh, training. And the last one is the functional electronic stimulations. Uh, the system using a multiple multi-channel EMG signal accretion model detects the movement. Uh, intention of the non-affected side. The system using an embedded MCU to process, identify and analyze EMG signals and upload them to the main control MCU. The main control MCU controls the multi-channel uh, electro uh, stimulation output through stimulate the combined of different muscles complete the mineral function training actions. At the same time, the aff affected side forms closed loop feedback through sensors to dynamic adjust the, EM, uh, the FES patterns and output current. And the, uh, the right video shows the, uh, the, 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 the clinical test we have, uh, we have we have uh, we have tests from uh, our uh, FES stimulation systems, and the part two is uh, uh, our up, upper lamp rehab robot. Uh, just like the uh, sample uh, we 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 discussed before, uh, due, uh, at the left side just uh, shows the non-affected side. We use a lot of sensors maybe just like the video and the IMU sensors, we can uh, collect the angle, angle accelerate 
regions, angle of facility and phase. And we can use high density SEMG image to, to, to recognize the hand movement and, the, and also the up lamp posture. And we send this signal to the effective side. And, and the MCU can control the cap drive and stimulation uh, electrode to, um, to, to drive the uh, to drive the patient's arm move and to make the patient's hand to uh, to 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 give some a lot of uh, 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 rehab uh, gestures. And uh, the next one is uh, our robot prototype. Uh, this, this is the multi degree of freedom cab track up lamp rehab robot. We can see. Uh, we used the air back to uh, fix the uh, fix our uh, robot to the patient's arms. We can use the we can use uh, the different uh, different joint such as the shoulder and the elbow and uh, and the the degree of arm and the rob robot. Uh, of degree will be just the same. So the next one is we develop the waist rehab robot. The waist rehab robot also use the cab drive, hybrid drive, and the mirror control. The airbag uh, can also fix the uh, waist rehab robot to the uh, to 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 your to, to the arms, and. Uh, this is a, a professor. Uh, this is a robot professor that can test our uh, robot. Uh, they give a lot of uh, recommend, recommend or suggestion to our systems. And the part three is the lower lamp rehab robot. Uh, the construction design for, of lower lamp rehab robot established of human couple mode. Uh, the left. Uh, a figure shows that we we can also use the power system uh, structure and it can be shows that we also use the hybrid uh, driving and we can also adjustable uh, adjustable the leg and uh, we can also use the cab traction uh, the right picture figure shows this is the whole frame of our systems and the next is the our robot prototype. We can see the left one is the knee joint uh, movement, and the second one is the ankle joint, and the last two is the hip joint. And the all, all the joints uh, we have uh, also reached the uh, demand of the rehab trainings. And go to the last uh, section, uh, and is the clinical specifications. Uh, as we all know, uh, in nineteen uh, in twenty nineteen, the General Office of National Health Com Commission established an expert com com comment for clinical ap application management of surg surgical robots. Uh, this marks the Clinical application of surgical robots will gradually become standardized. But uh, what about the rehab rob in China? I think uh, there, uh, until now, they, we, we didn't have the uh, standardized. But, but I can see, uh, but, but we have also do some work on the standardized of rehab robots, such as we participated in the Drafting of the national standardized uh, called general techni technical condition for rehab rehabilitation training robots, and this national standard uh, standards has come into effect by the government uh, last year, and we have we have uh, uh, also another national uh, standardized, but not uh, just only one part of the. Can fix uh, can fit, fit our uh, rehab robot, and uh, the general techno 
technical condition for rehab rehabilitation uh, training robot uh, was uh, leader by the National Standardized Management Committee and the National Specialized Robot Standardized Work Group. And the Southeast University Landing Special Equipment Safety uh, Supervise and Inspect Institute and a lot of other uh, company and institute was engaged in the in this national uh, National national uh, uh, conditions. So, uh, so I think we should be uh, work uh, more uh, more time or work hard on the uh, on the standardized of robot rehab robot and go to the acknowledgement. Uh, thank thanks all the people that come from Southeast University, China, uh, Chinese Academy of Science, uh, the first affiliate hospital of Nanjing Medical University and Nanjing Weisi Medical Technology Co Company, and also from Zhejiang U University, and Guangzhou First People's Hospital and Chinese Academy of Science, Hefei Institute of Material. Thank you. That's all. If you have any questions, please uh, ask me or contact, uh, contact me through the email and which, uh, WeChat. Thank you. And um, thank you very much, Professor Liu. Uh, 谢谢 Liu 教授. Uh, 因为我们的时间关系，现在是呃嗯，多伦多的时间，早上九点，嗯，北京时间晚上十点。那么就是说我们可能需要尽快的就是结束今天的讲座。So thank you, um, Professor Liu. Um, because uh, now is 9 o'clock uh, in Toronto and uh, 10 p.m. in China, uh, we will need to wrap up this uh, forum and thank you for your attending. Uh, we have three questions answered uh, in the Q&A. Uh, you can take a look in the Q&A. And if you have further questions, please send me um, the email. Uh, you will have my email address uh, when you register. My email is in there. Uh, and I'm going to um, uh, wrap up uh, today's uh, forum. Uh, thank you all for our panelists and the speakers. Thank you for the excellent talks today. Wish everyone uh, have a good day and a good evening. 那么祝大家, uh, 有一个美好的晚上, uh, uh, 那么我们下一次再见 uh, Let's see you next forum Thank you Thank you all uh, Thank you Professor Liu Thank you Thank you Professor Liu Thank you Thank you Thank you Professor Liu Thank you Thank you You have order in the car so <laughs> It was outstanding you. you are so busy yeah. Thank you Thank you yeah, You're yeah, outstanding yeah, yeah. Thank you so much uh, yeah, uh, We'll do it again uh, <laughs> Yeah, see you again. Yeah. See you again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. We'll do it again shortly. Uh -huh. Thanks.